This chair is about to get a makeover. I'm going to paint it. I'm going to paint the wood, but I'm also going to paint the fabric. That's right. I am going to paint the fabric. No sanding, no priming, no prep work needed. So stick around because this is a transformation that you do not want to miss. Hey, I'm Deanna. Welcome to my studio. I've got this mid-century modern slipper chair that needs some sprucing up. So I'm going to paint it with chalk paint by Annie Sloan. I've used this product before to paint upholstery and fabric and loved the results, but I've never painted a fabric quite like this. So I'm really curious to see how it comes out. Be sure you watch all the way to the end of the video so that you too can see the results. And I'll answer some frequently asked questions like how much paint did it use? How long do you wait between coats? And how does it feel after it's painted? Let's get right to the project. The key to painting fabric with chalk paint is to get the fabric wet prior to painting so that the paint soaks into the fabric rather than just sitting on top. The first step is just to pour some water into a paint tray. And then using a big round full brush, dip your brush in the water and then paint your fabric with the water. Get the fabric wet so that it saturates all the way through, but not so much that it saturates the entire foam padding underneath. You could also use a spray bottle and some water and mist the fabric, but I prefer the brush. I think it helps to press the water deeper into the weave especially on something like this that has a raised pile. This particular fabric is called Freeze. It's a combination of tightly woven cut and uncut loops, and that's what gives it the diamond shape. And fabric like this was popular in the 1950s and 60s, and it's a pretty stiff, rigid fabric to begin with. Now that I've got it nice and wet in this one area, I'm gonna go ahead and paint in sections. So the next step is to pour a little paint into my tray. I like using the same tray for my water and paint, so it's easy to add a little water to the paint as I go if I need to. And I've picked out the color Old White. Again, this is chalk paint by Annie Sloan that I'm gonna be working with. Pour some paint into your tray. And I'm using the same brush that I used to paint the water on the fabric and the moisture in the bristles will help to thin the paint slightly. But you can always dip it into the water to thin it a little bit more. The idea is to work the paint into the fabric rather than just leaving a thick layer on top with a back and forth sweeping motion or scrubbing. Now, depending on the fabric, you may need to do more than one layer. So don't worry about getting super solid covered all in one shot. Continue to work in sections, painting with water and then painting with paint until all of the fabric is completely covered. It's okay if a little bit of paint remains in the brush as you move on to the next section. Just dip your brush in the water, paint the fabric to get it wet, and then carry on with painting. And because I'm gonna be painting the wood pieces after, I'm not gonna worry about masking them off with painter's tape. If a little bit of paint gets onto the wood, that's okay, but I'll do my best just to keep it on the fabric for now.
I finished the first layer of paint and that took about 30 minutes to complete. And as you can see, it still looks a little patchy, a little uneven, but that's totally normal at this stage. While we're waiting for this to dry, I'm gonna answer some of those frequently asked questions that I get before moving on to the second coat. So the first question being, how many coats of paint does it need? Again, as you can see, this is a little bit patchy and uneven, so I'm definitely gonna do a second coat to make it a little bit more solid. Every fabric is unique and will take the paint different. Even the colors that you choose can make a difference as well. For example, I'm using a white color over a medium tone. If I was doing a black or a darker color, it may be much more solid at this point. But typically, in my experience, I find two or three layers of paint to get a good, even, solid coverage. The next question I get a lot is, do you have to sand between coats? If you have a smooth fabric and you want a super smooth finish, you can sand very lightly between coats, but anything with a raised pile or texture like this, as soon as you start sanding, it's going to distress to reveal that pattern. So in my case, I'm not going to be sanding between coats and it's going to adhere and work just fine. Another question I get asked often is, do you have to seal the fabric with wax? The traditional sealer for chalk paint is a paste wax, and you can apply it over fabric, but generally speaking, you want to use that on a smooth fabric. Anything with raised texture, again, like this one here, the wax is just gonna get built up in all of that texture and stay sticky on the surface. If you do have a smooth fabric that you're working with and you'd like to wax it after the paint is dry, you'll end up with a really nice, soft, almost leathery feel to it, and it is a beautiful finish. But in this case, I'm not going to be waxing and I don't have to worry about any paint coming off on my clothes because once it's dry, it'll be set. So we're not worried about transfer onto clothing. I also get the question, will the paint crack or flake off? If you just take the paint straight out of the can and you paint a thick layer on top of the fabric, you are likely to get cracks or flaking. That's why we add water so the paint can absorb, can soak into the fiber, into the weave, and then it's less likely to crack. And the most common question I get is, how does it feel? To be honest, it will feel different than when you started. Anytime you paint fabric, it will become a little bit stiffer than it originally was. In this case, this was already a pretty stiff fabric to begin with, so once it dries, I'll have a good sense of how it feels. At this point, it feels nice and soft, but it's still really wet, so let's wait till it fully dries and then I can answer that question. I'm gonna leave this to sit a little while longer for the first layer to dry. Once that's dry, I'll move on to my second coat and then on to painting the legs. It's been two and a half hours since I finished my first coat, and I actually set my chair outside in the sun to help speed up the drying process. Drying times will vary depending on how much water you use, the type of fabric, how thick you put your paint on, but you do want it to feel really nice and dry before going on to your second layer. Otherwise, if you go too soon, it's just gonna kind of blend with that first layer and you won't see the coverage that you're hoping for. The second layer of the application is very similar to the first, but I won't be adding as much water in the beginning, just mostly mixing the water and paint in my tray as I go. I'll dip my brush into the paint and add a little water that's already in the tray to thin the paint slightly. And then again, a sweeping back and forth motion or scrubbing to work it into the fabric. Second coat is all done. I'm gonna leave it dry. We'll come back and see how it looks. The second coat of paint is now dry on my chair. I had left this one to sit overnight so it could completely dry all the way through. It's definitely more white than when I started, but still not as white as I want it to be. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a third layer of paint, exact same method as I used for the second.
So using the same paint that I've been painting the fabric with, this is old white chalk paint by Annie Sloan, I'm just gonna dip my brush in and start to paint on the wood surface. So even though there is an existing stain on here, there's no sanding or no priming, no prep required. And I've got lots of videos coming up that go more in depth about chalk paint. So if you're interested in that topic, remember to subscribe and click the notification bell so you're alerted every time I upload new content. For today, I'm just going to give you a quick overview. Dip your brush into the paint, and this time we're not diluting with any water, and then just go ahead and start to paint it on. The first coat is usually a little bit patchy or uneven. Don't worry about that, we'll let it dry, and then when we come back and do a second coat, it'll be much more solid. First coat finished on the wood pieces, that was pretty quick and easy, and it'll dry much quicker on the wood than on the fabric, usually about 15 minutes up to half an hour depending on the surface. So I'll let that dry and then I'll come back and do a second coat. Now that the paint has completely dried on the legs, I'm gonna go ahead and apply a second coat. Second coat of paint is done on the legs, three coats of paint done and dry on the fabric. There's a couple of spots in the fabric where it's a little bit uneven and could use a little bit more paint. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a fourth layer in some areas onto the fabric. Again, mixing my paint with water to help it soak into the fabric. I just finished the fourth layer on the fabric. I'm gonna leave it to dry and then we'll come back and take a look. My chair is now completely dry and I'm finished with painting. But before I review this project, I want to mention that I will be posting a lot of videos about chalk painting furniture, all different kinds of techniques, tips and tricks. As well, I will be doing another painting upholstery video, this time on a smooth fabric and I'll show you how to wax it. As promised, here comes the review. It took four layers of paint to paint the fabric. Each layer was watered down slightly so it absorbed into the fabric took about 30 minutes to complete each coat. I allowed it to dry a few hours between layers, a couple of the layers I even let it sit overnight so it was dry all the way through. The wood of the legs took two layers and I did not dilute the paint at all and that was really quick and easy. It took about 10 minutes to paint the wood on the chair, allowed it to dry about 20 minutes between each of those layers and I got a really great solid coverage. In total, I used an entire liter of paint to paint this chair. Now I've painted a lot of fabric and upholstery with chalk paint before, but never anything quite like this. So I was really curious to see how it would turn out. Let's take a closer look. Earlier I mentioned this was a transformation that you wouldn't want to miss because I think we have a lot that we can learn from this project. Overall, it is whiter than when I started, but honestly, it's not as white as I had hoped it would be. I think the texture of the fabric creates some shadows, which gives it more of an off-white appearance, and I was really hoping for a brighter white color. If we take a look down here at this bottom corner where some of the raised pattern was worn off and the fabric was already smoother, it came out really nice and white and crisp. And this area here is actually a really good example of what textured versus smooth fabric would look like painted. Now I could have carried on and continued to add layers on top of the textured paint to try and bring it more to this color. But at that point, I would have been using so much paint to try and fill in all of these grooves and gaps that it would have become really stiff and it likely would have cracked, which is what we were wanting to avoid. At this point, I can press on the fabric, I can sit on it, nothing comes off on my clothing, nothing's cracking or chipping off, which is exactly what we want. 
Now this definitely feels stiffer than before, but as I mentioned earlier, it was a very stiff fabric to begin with. And in my experience, the more you sit on the chair and you use the fabric, it will soften up over time. If I was going to paint this type of fabric again, I would definitely go to a darker color. And I think that would help with some of this shadowing that we're seeing. Also, I would pick a paint color that was darker than the fabric to begin with because I think we'd need less paint to get better coverage. I would also look for a piece of furniture that didn't have any signs of wear and tear. As you can see, painting the fabric does not hide the imperfections. If you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments below and remember to click the subscribe button and the notification bell so you are alerted every time I upload a new video. Thanks for watching all the way to the end of the video and I'll see you back here next time.